One of the stressors in life is the constant incoming of mails, as well as papers, files, and documents that just seems to pop up out of nowhere. If not handled properly, they can become an insidious problem that's always hanging in the back of our mind and a constant distraction that holds us back from higher qualities of life. Like enjoying a cup of matcha and this delicately made chickpea matcha cake. You might be wondering where I got this delicious cake from. It's actually very simple to make. Just put a boiled chickpea into a blender and add some water. Then transfer it into a pot. Add a quarter cup of sugar, two tablespoons of matcha, but here I'm using one tablespoon of matcha and one tablespoon of green supplement from Timmy because it's more economical this way. And then constantly stir it for 30 minutes while watching a show until it becomes a paste-like consistency. Then cover it fully to prevent the paste from drying up. Let it cool completely overnight. Then on the next day, use the mooncake mold to shape it into place. Timmy's green supplement is packed with 16 superfoods and green nutrients to help you get your daily intake of veggies, promote natural energy level, and support regular digestion and overall well-being. And most importantly, the green supplement also makes the matcha cake look more vibrant. You can take the green supplement with water, juice, smoothie, but I like to add it to my matcha because it gives it a much richer texture. So if you're interested in the green supplement, you can use my code TINATOM25 to get a 25% discount. Timmy is also working with Feeding America to serve as much meals as possible. So a portion of every purchase you make will also go toward individuals and families that really need help during this difficult time. I keep all my papers in the bottom two cubbies of my Calyx shelf. I love that all the papers are behind closed doors so that on the outside, things will always look tidy and organized. In the first one, I have a magazine rack, and inside I have a few folders with tabs sticking out that helps me to identify the major categories. For me, I have inbox, tax, banking, and a few other categories. These categories are pretty personal, and I just created them based on the type of documents that I want to keep. There are some papers that I can totally get rid of, like my first cover letter out of university, my thesis, internship reports, and things like that. But I just think it's interesting to keep them, so I haven't thrown them away yet. The inbox folder is for things that I want to file away, but if I'm in a hurry, I might not want to spend time putting them in the correct location. So I just put it in the inbox folder so that later when I have time to organize, I know exactly what needs to be filed away. I'm also using a different color for inbox folder so that it can be easily identified. Inside these folders, I might even have subfolders. For example, in my tax folder, I have more folders that separate the documents by year. Every year, I will start a new folder, and all the tax-related documents and receipts for that year will go in there. This makes it super easy for me to do taxes by the end of the year, and also easy for me to put away tax-related documents and receipts during that year. Inside this folder, I also have an envelope that stores all the receipts so that they can be nicely separated from other documents and they won't accidentally fall out. But of course, this is not all the receipts. The majority of my receipts are actually online, and I have a spreadsheet to keep track of them. For things like contracts and agreements, I do all my signings digitally, and I store them on my computer as well. So in this other cubby, I have a wicker basket, and inside is the manuals for all my appliances, as well as some documents for my home. And that's about all the papers I have, unless you want to count notebooks and books. And next, I want to share a few things with you that will reduce paper clutter from the source. Okay, so when it comes to paper organization, I think everyone's goal is to process them as few and far between as possible. So the first thing I would recommend is to stop those mails from coming to you in the first place. There are two types of paper clutters, the ones that other people send to us and the ones that we produce ourselves. For the first type, I think the most stressful one would be monthly and recurring bills that we get from various service providers, like our phone bills, credit card, internet, hydro bills, maintenance fee, mortgage payment, car payment, etc. So that is a crazy amount of distraction if you were to manually process them and take actions on them. So I highly recommend everyone to pay their service providers through pre-authorized payment. 
so that these companies can automatically charge you on your debit or credit card. I have all these recurring bills on my credit card so that I never have to get any mails from the companies and I just make it a habit to monitor these transactions on my credit card regularly. And by the end of the year, if I need to organize these receipts for tax purposes, I will just log on to the service provider's website and download all the bills and receipts. So that way I'm basically saving myself from at least 8 distractions every month. But I understand that not everyone feel comfortable doing this. I think some people are concerned about being overcharged or charged incorrectly so that they want to be the last person to review these bills. But in my situation, I just really enjoy not having to think about making these payments. And also I don't run the risk of missing a payment in case I forget. And I'll never need to worry about paying a penalty for that. And in the case of any dispute about the charges, I can just call the service provider and have a conversation about that. And now, for the incoming mails that we get, there's three different things we can do. For the advertisement and brochures that I'm not really interested in, I would just discard them immediately right out of the mailbox. And for the mails that do deserve my attention, I would skim them and then decide if there's any actions need to be taken. There are some letters that are addressed to the entire community or neighborhood, and I just need to be aware of them. So I would read them, process the information, and then discard them. If there's actually action needs to be taken, for example, like a letter from the government telling you something is about to expire, I would schedule it in my agenda and then put the letter on my table or kitchen counter. The norm for my kitchen counter is that it's usually pretty clear, so having an unprocessed mail is almost like pinning it to my fridge, so it's there to remind me to take that action. So some papers need to be archived for longer term storage, and these things could be receipts, tax documents, tax slips, agreements, contracts, etc. And if I have time, I will put it in the exact folder that it should go in. But if I'm in a hurry, I would actually just put it in the inbox folder and then organize it later when I have more time. Okay, so the next category are the paper clutter that we produce ourselves. So sometimes maybe you're working on something and you just want to do a brain dump on a piece of paper. Maybe you're brainstorming or sketching or just writing down all your ideas or taking down a phone number. And by the end, I'll decide whether there is any value in keeping these papers. Because if I already finished the project or have the results somewhere else, I don't really need to keep that in progress work. So in that case, I would just throw it away immediately. But if there is value in preserving those information, then I would actually take a picture of it and then discard the papers. There's a really good scanning app that you can download called PhotoScan and it's by Google. And it can give you a really high quality scan of your document. And this app basically eliminates the need of having a scanner, especially for people that don't do scanning very often and don't have a lot to scan. So that is about all I do for minimizing and organizing the papers in my home. I think the key to success comes down to three things. Number one is to reduce the incoming mails to your home in the first place. And number two is to go digital as much as possible. And number three is to have a home for all the things that you want to keep. So that it's easy for you to process them on a daily basis and stay organized all the time. Let me know if you have any tips related to paper organization and leave it in the comments down below. I think everyone would really appreciate reading them. Thanks for watching this video and I will see you in the next one.